All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of This Weekend Charts via Carnivore Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you've not done so already, please give it a video thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find Jason on Patreon or come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it this week. So uh, Labor Day weekend here, we will have a shortened trading week next weekend and markets last week of the month of September plus one day, or I should say uh, August, plus one day of September last week. Um, and I think I talked about this previously, but we did kind of have a float up. Again, when you come into these holiday weeks, it's very common to kind of trade neutral to up. Um, although we did have a pretty big surge on Tuesday. So markets kind of pricing in that uh, jolts number and liked the, like the data that we got, essentially much weaker than expected. And then we kind of just drifted neutral to higher um, Wednesday, Thursday into Friday, we did go into the level we talked about. So again, there's the spiders, uh, that gap window, and that's the level uh, that we've been watching here. And that should get defended here as resistance. So we'll see how that plays out going into next week. Um, I do think we get some more volatility coming back into the market again. Like I said, um, those last week, you know, last week before a holiday, or last week of the month, last week of summer, it's very common, um, you know, big boys, they're all in the Hamptons, they're not trading this. Um, you've got kind of the JV squad on deck and um, it's just common to see a neutral to upside market. That's just the way it kind of works here. But we are into resistance here on the spiders and we'll see if we get some, um, you know, if the big boys come back and, and sell this thing back down. If we do come back down, um, you got a level here right around 445 there on the spiders. That was your uh, reversal from two Thursdays ago we did break above that on tuesday so right around that 445 area i'd say is going to be your short-term support for the spiders if that breaks um, then you really don't have anything till about 435 and then really uh, down to 430 if we zoom out a little bit you can see that pivot there which you know kind of got tested essentially a few weeks ago um, if we get through that the obvious level here is your gap fill and then your double top there at 459 to 460. So pretty simple, very easy cookie cutter levels there on the spiders going into next week, Tuesday. You know, it's hard to say the futures right now are basically flat. Um, generally, you get kind of a holiday hangover, um, especially after a Labor Day, you know, those, those shortened uh, or I should say those extended weekends. Um, so Tuesday, I would assume would be kind of quiet and we'll see if uh, the market does anything going into Wednesday. But that's our big level there. Going into next week, if we look at the triple Qs again, you can see the same thing. We talked about this 380 should get, um, you know, it should be your upside target. So upside objective with that gap window right there. And then again, it's a big weekly level, right? So that was the level we hit before. We never really sustained above it. Now we're testing it again. We did pull back off of it on Friday. Again, not a lot of selling, right? So again, it's the market was very light volume last week. That's very common. Um, but we did react off of that and we'll see if we get more of a pullback for the queues here. I'd say 370 area is going to be your short term level. If we break below that, then it's back down to this trend line, uh, which coincides with that 100 period moving up. Excuse me, 100 period moving average, um, which I do think eventually gets hit. So um, those are the levels, the big levels we're watching on the S&P and the NASDAQ. But again, uh, very, very light volume trading week. Not a whole lot going on news wise outside of the jobs data. Um, and the market probably is going to start to look forward to that FOMC. Now, uh, again, with that jobs data, is the labor market starting to crack here? We'll talk about the yield curves in a little bit. Um, but energy is the big story of the week, and that's going to be something we'll talk about as well here. But in any case, before we get into that, Russell 2000, um, that did have a decent day on Friday, up 1.19%. Um, a lot of that helped out by the regional banks, which got a bid. But we got through that key 190 level. We talked about these gaps um, right here. We filled both of them, one and two, um, right there at 191. That got filled, and we pulled back in off of that. There is a little bit of short-term resistance up here. The big level for the Russell, though, is 194. We'll see if that gets hit at some point here. If we, do, if we start to pull back, your support is right around 186.50. Um, but Russell getting a nice pop last week, and the same thing with the Dow here. Um, up into the 350 handle, pulling back a little bit on Thursday, and then kind of just an inside day on Friday. If this flags here and starts to go sideways, it could have one more zigzag up, probably into the 353, uh, 354 handle. If we do start to come down, you'll have support at the gap fill at 343.50. So those are the levels that we're watching there on the diamond for the semis. Again, floating up like everything else here. We did have earnings out of Broadcom. They did signal some weaker chip demand there. So again, Nvidia really the only, um, really the only semi that had a really good 
reaction to earnings here. And, you know, you can say what you want about um, how they, you know, got those books to, to, to uh, you know, come out the way that they did. Um, but in any case, the semis here, um, they did have a float up, never closed above this gap, though, or uh, excuse me, above this red bar reversal, though, uh, which was off of the NVIDIA earnings. So we had that big gap in crap on the NVIDIA earnings. Um, we never closed above that. So a little bit of sign of weakness there, not being able to close above that. If it does, then you can go up to 160. Uh, but for right now, that that uh, area was held on the semiconductors and we'll see 150 area should be support on the downside. At least these are just short term levels here. Um, but ultimately, I think you get down at least to this trend line here. And if that breaks, then that opens a big air pocket down to, you know, really that 130 handle, which would fill the NVIDIA, uh, the previous NVIDIA earnings gap. But semiconductors pulling back in on Friday and never getting back above that level. Cloud software was the big star of the week. Um, last Friday, we had earnings from Intuit. They did really well. Um, CRM and both CrowdStrike. Uh, reporting Wednesday afternoon and they got big bids on Thursday so that really saved the IGV this week ahead of you know kind of precarious candle a week ago or two weeks ago I should say I talked about this that, that I never like it when you close below those big green bars um, but you know they had we had a couple of earnings reports come out they reported a little bit later than, than uh, some of the rest of the tech um, and that did give them a lift so again right now uh, IGV you have a little bit of a gap there at 364.52 we never quite filled it on Friday um, yeah, night didn't quite get there. And then your big weekly level is still going to be that 367, uh, 367.22 to be exact. And then, of course, the double top. But they're all right in that same vicinity. But IGV, impressive recovery. You can make a case you basically just kissed that 20-week moving average. Um, so that's holding up okay. Um, so de definitely got saved by those earnings. But cloud software, uh, still a strong sector and definitely should be make, made note of. Uh, now onto a weak sector here, transports. Um, again, getting a, you know, a float up this week, right? But here's your action, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or excuse me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, you peaked on Wednesday and never made a new high. Um, you know, whereas you kind of look at the market here that made a, and a higher high on Friday, even the triple Qs, um, the Russell and the Dow, I should say the Dow made a new high on Thursday, but the transport's definitely on the weaker side. And again, we could still make a case here pattern wise, you know, it's, kind of looking you can draw it in there we go kind of looking kind of bare flaggish right never closed above that 20 moving average you just closed above the 50 one day and then pulled right back in and then still unable to get above that on on friday so again you could make a case this is a down move inside bar bear consolidation for another move down towards that fifteen thousand handle again there will be a little support there at 15 250 but i think 15k is your big level that was the big you know, breakout, right? You had resistance here, you flagged, and then you had that thrust through it. So that should be support. I do think that gets tested. Um, again, do we start to see this come in uh, as we get closer to, um, you know, September? You know, historically, not a very good month for the market. This could be a leading indicator. Often the transports are. Um, so a lot to look at here, but transport's definitely a weaker sector, and uh, we definitely need to make note of that. All right, let's flip over here to interest rates. So a lot to talk about here. Again, rates pulling back a little bit. Again, we have the jobs data, right? So this is the two year here. Jobs data suggesting, you know, kind of a slowdown. Um, fives pulling back. Again, these did have decent comebacks though on Friday. You see the two year nice tail candle there. Five year nice tail candle. There's the 30s and 10s. Um, these patterns, there's really nothing wrong with them and they're still holding up really well. You went into double top on the 10 year. We went into double top on the 30 and the two year, you know, you kind of have like a triple top here and you can make a case this is a cup and handle. If we get up to, and I'll say it one more time, if we get up to this area, that's 5.33, which is the effective Fed funds rate, it's going to be a huge, huge, huge problem for the market. Um, the, there's experts out there telling you that, um, you know, the Fed's done hiking. There's experts telling you that, um, you know, rates are going back to zero. The bottom line is, if this gets through that, the Fed is not done hiking. It's really just the way it works. So the two-year yield has got to be in line with the Fed funds rate. And um, if it exceeds that, then the Fed's back behind the curve again. That's just really the way it works. Um, but I will say, looking at the yield curves, um, twos and tens here, spread starting to, it's trying to tighten up. It's trying to tighten here. Three month and 10 year, again, it's trying to tighten up. It's well off the lows, but there's still a lot of work to do. 
Um, this is this is the flat line. We're still negative 126 basis points. The the twos and tens are down 70 basis points. Um, fives and thirties and tens and thirties are flat to positive, but still still very inverted there. Um, so don't make you know don't take anything for granted here. Um, I know the data is starting to slow down, and you know the rate hikes. Um, there is a lag effect, and we're kind of coming into that sweet spot, especially as we get into the seasonal period where the market is weak. Um, but the bottom line, if that gets up there, this two year. Um, it's going to poke a hole in that entire narrative that the Fed's going to be able to just drop rates here. Um, but either way, um, rates holding up. We'll continue to monitor that. And the yield curves are starting to come in, but, you know, they still have got a ways to go. All right, over to housing here. XHB just can't keep this thing down, right? So we talked about this a week ago. We had a down move, and it was starting to bear flag a little bit. And, um, you know, just <laughs> just floated right back up. You know, I just kind of negated it. Um, pretty pretty quickly. So XHB is still strong. Home builders holding up really well. ITB is still strong, a little, little bit weaker than the XHB. This Remember, this has a lot of retailers. Um, and retail did, you know, had some um, problems here over the last week. The XRT not really performing well. We had a few um, earnings coming out this week and a lot of those companies did not do, not do so hot there in the retail space. But XRT, um, again, not really it's barely positive for the year, so not really a good sign there. But either way, um, the ITB itself holding up okay, still into some resistance here. This is where we broke down, and it's back testing. So we'll see if that holds. But um, did have a nice week there. Um, VNQ here also having a decent week. My micro kind of bull flag start starting to look up there. Um, again, this is your bear flag breakdown. We came up into it. If we can consolidate here, we can have one more push up to 84. If it fails and we come down, we should get down to 78. I don't see it getting through that right now. So those are the levels I'm watching there on the VNQ. Uh, for XLF, XLF held up reasonably well this week, but I do wanna talk about this a little bit. The financials are a little bit of a concern here. Um, XLF, I just wanna make this clear. A lot of, the biggest portion of XLF is Berkshire. This is not a bank, this is just a holding company, right? And Berkshire, own, I mean, <laughs> Two thirds of Berkshire is basically Apple. So um, it kind of skews the XLF just a little bit. But if we look at the charts of just these individual banks, I don't like this here on JPM. Um, that's another, you know, look, looks just like the transports, right? That's a bear flag. Bank of America, you know, same thing here. These are not patterns of strength. This is a weak chart. You can see the same thing there on Wells, down move, bear flag. Um, Citigroup is a is disaster, down move, bear flag. This is basically at the lows. You know, this is still close to the pandemic lows, by the way. So in really rough shape. Goldman and Morgan Stanley, not in the greatest shape either. Um, so the banks may be, and if you guys remember, if you guys have been following us for a while, um, I talked about this back in December. I said KRE is, I said the regional banks are going to be a problem. This is back in December. I had no idea that they were going to fail, that we we're going to have the Silicon Valley blow up. Um, but the charts told me that something was wrong. I saw this big breakdown here in the KRE. And if we look at the spiders back then, the spiders were just holding up. And then, then they broke down. And then we had the regional bank crisis. Um, so, I, like I said, I've been doing this long enough to know that when bank stocks start to just sell off for no reason, um, and not just sell off, but I mean, like really start to break down. There's a problem ahead. Smart money knows something is coming on um, around the corner. That said, uh, XLF did hold up a little bit by the end of the week. KRE got a nice bid on Friday. Can't take anything away from it. Um, still be some resistance at 46 and then the gap fill at 46.80 and change. And then uh, KBE had a nice bid on Friday as well. Gap, yeah, gap, excuse me, window, gap window at 40 bucks. And then a gap fill at 40.69 will be levels to watch moving forward. Um, so just keep an eye on them. Um, it could be nothing, but could be something much bigger. Um, broker dealers here got to the 510 level, like I talked about last week. That should need to stall out there. Okay, on to the big rock star of the week. And this is what kind of I, I talked about a minute ago. Um, are we seeing conflicting data here, right? The yield curve starting to normalize. That usually signals we're getting close to a recession. But we could be getting close to stagflation right the two-year continuing to rise um, but maybe the 30-year starting to move up faster as those yield curves normalize what do i mean by this well if we're going into recession um why is crude breaking out and you guys know if you've been following this for a long time 
Uh, and that doesn't mean we won't go into a recession. It could be a stagflationary recession. That's what I want to say here. Um, but you, if you've been following me for any amount of time, I've been telling you, banging the, my fist on the table, 83.53. You get a weekly close above that, it's over. So, um, and yeah, we got that last week. That is a power move on Friday, um, an impulsive move too. I, did, I was not prepared for this. I thought we would have to consolidate maybe in a couple more weeks. We still might have to do backing and filling. It wouldn't surprise me to see crude pull back here, but that is a breakout on crude futures. And I think dips can be bought. Um, and I kind of thought that anyway, um, but dips can be bought throughout the rest of the year here. Um, that's an impulsive breakout there on crude. Again, I thought we would have to do maybe two, three more weeks, just a little bit more. And then I thought that would be more of a healthier move. You still have, you know, there is still some resistance here. I, I don't think that we've done enough consolidation to really squeeze up, although it can happen now because we have we have pushed through that level and we've closed above it on a weekly close. That's a huge sign of strength. Um, so energy acting really well. Um, XLE up 2% on Friday. Um, this is going back to the highs. So again, it doesn't mean it'll go there in a straight line. I would have loved to see a little bit more consolidation on this, um, but it, you can't really take anything away. Um, trend is up and energy <laughs> is really strong. XOP, I thought this would need to do more consolidation. Um, and it still might, but you got a weekly close above that break up, breakdown bar. I have to give it the upside bias to 160. Um, so it doesn't mean these things can't pull back, but they're acting really well. And um, it's, it looks like shorts are, are covering here. So um, when you see those close above those weekly levels here, OIH, here's OIH. This should still get to 370. Um, you know, 365, it's just down sloping 100 moving average. And then you've got this pivot high right here. That'll be resistance if we overshoot a little bit. It's around 375. Uh, but, you know, energy is just really strong right now, and I can't take anything away. Um, Nat Gas here had a nice week as well, though. It did come in. I'm doing this video on Monday here. Um, so the futures are open. did come in on Monday, but it had a nice week. Last week still has that really nice weekly base there and really all energy. And you can see here the higher lows here on Nat Gas. That kind of ascending triangle look. Um, so, again, energy here, very strong. Um, I'm not betting against it in any capacity here. Speaking of energy, CCJ. Um, another power week, I believe they made a little announcement. Um, so I believe, yeah, so we maintain flexibility to source material through various means beyond production if required, including increasing our market purchases, pulling forward long-term purchases, using inventory or borrowing products. So they're going to spot market and uh, buying up spots. So that's very interesting here. Um, into that big level I talked to you about, uh, we'll have to go zoom in here. So we got to go all the way back to 2011. This was Fukushima, guys. <laughs> that was your Fukushima gap down. So right there, we finally filled that gap. And you can see it on a monthly right there. Um, so that should be resistance. We are a little overbought, a little stretched here. Um, but, you know, it's acting well. It should have gotten up there. We, we thought it would get up there, and it has. You are NM. Again, into a little resistance here with that pivot high. We get, did get through that, but you got this reversal bar at 40 bucks. So again, the, you know, uranium stocks and, and um, these ETFs are into resistance here, but they're having power moves. And I told you guys about this weeks, months ago, actually. So as soon as you close above this, um, you can buy dips. And that was the case. It's had a nice move, dipped down to 31 and change, and now it's at 39. So big move there for the URNM and uranium. All, all really all energy looking very good here all right um on to some ag here look at dbc on friday big pop i talked to you guys about this pattern last couple of weeks nice bull flag on the weekly and a nice pop there so that should we'll give that the upside bias to 25 well, let's say 25 and a quarter 25.50 um nice move there for the dbc those of you who follow the dba this is still trending up nicely still not above those highs here but trend is up and uh it's acting very well here as well some of the uh Potash names curling back up a little bit. MOS acting well. That'll have some resistance here at this gap fill. NTR nutrient again into that gap fill, or excuse me, gap window. And then there's your gap fill at 66 and change. And Intrepid still looking very good on the charts. I like how you came up here into resistance. You curled back down. You've got higher lows. And now you're trying to curl back up. So that's, and again, nice little inside bar, bull flag on the weekly. 
you know, if that can start to push up here, you can see it up into, you know, around that $30 range. So Intrepid starting to curl back up and looking a lot stronger. Okay, uh, let's get over here to the dollar index. Um, again, <laughs> just acting really well. So again, um, typically with bad jobs report, which we're getting, we're getting these, these, this weak jobs data, which the market likes, because it essentially means the Fed is going to slow down hikes or, or potentially pause. Um, but again, the energy is not saying that. Um, and look at the dollar. Closed green on the week last week. Tested last week's low all the way down and then right back up and closed green. Um, the dollar looks really strong. You know, I, I see here, you know, this may be flagging. It could do some weekly consolidation. But again, I told you, as soon as you get above these levels, which it did on weekly close, it's, it's, it's telling you it's strong and this can squeeze up. Um, so the, I don't know, dollar wrecking ball might be back on. There's no, nothing wrong with this pattern. Um, it just needs to consolidate and then you can get up to 106. So DXY acting really well. Um, definitely respect that moving forward. Uh, gold actually acting well additionally. So maybe it's a bit of a risk off trade here, the fact that gold and the dollar are acting well. Um, we're also seeing kind of the 30 year get a little bit of a bid. We talked about that earlier, but um, even with that strong dollar, gold not really pulling back a lot on Friday. In fact, it was barely, it was barely red at all. We'll see how this pattern plays out. If this can consolidate more, it can get up to 2000 um, in the near term. If it starts to roll over, then it's back to that 1900 handle and that needs to hold. Otherwise it's down into the low 1800s here, but gold actually holding up pretty, pretty uh, reasonably well considering that strong dollar. Um, silver also acting well here, although it is about to fill that contract gap. So I talked about that, um, I believe, well, I talked about it on my channel on Monday because I forgot about that contract gap, but either way, um, it did have a big pop Monday. If you look at the SLV, it doesn't have that gap in the way. You can see we're basically below that right now. But it did have a decent week um, before coming back in. We'll see how it acts here. I'd say you can probably get down into 2350 um, if this area doesn't hold. If if, we, if this area the this gap doesn't hold, you probably get down to 2350. That was your last big breakout area. And if that doesn't hold, I, I still think this gets down to that 21 handle. So that's what I'm looking at there on silver. If it holds up though. You can get through 2350 then you can go back up to 26 and maybe even the highs there but silver acting well again remember this is an industrial metal so um if it's stagflation if that's the story like i think it is this is going to be it's going to perform better i know a lot of people are saying oh recession this recession that um so silver is going to go down if it's a stagflationary recession that's not necessarily the case so just keep that in mind um but silver with that big pop we'll see how that Reacts going into the next week and then platinum here down a little bit here on Monday um, has to hold 860 right now. Otherwise, you can go down back down to 920. And then if we lose that, um, it's down into this area, which I do like as a buy on platinum. Palladium still stuck in a range. Nothing that nothing doing there. I still think that wants to go sub 1100. And then that is a buy as well. Um, copper here did test 390 and just pulling back here on Monday. Nothing terrible. Uh, support remains 370. If we get through 390, then you can go retest 395 to four bucks. So that is hanging in there okay. All right, lastly, over to Bitcoin, um, all over the map this week. So we had that big pop on Tuesday along with the, the market. It kind of ran with the stock market. Um, and then it just immediately faded the, faded the whole move, right, over the next couple of days. Um, so I do not like Bitcoin here. I don't trust it either liquidity is very, very low in the crypto market right now and I just don't trust it because if we go over back over to the weekly you can see we had that picture perfect bull pattern and then that failed and then we had obviously that big pop on last Tuesday like okay yeah we're gonna we're gonna reverse it bear flag we're gonna reverse the bear flag and then that got immediately reversed so I just I don't trust anything here I wouldn't own it I wouldn't look to own it um, the only thing that would get me interested is if we break this level and we get down to 21.5. That's the only way I would look at it. If, if, it's got to go in a straight line, too. If that happens, I would consider picking up Bitcoin here at 21.5 for a swing. But at, at this at this juncture, uh, I just can't trust this pattern. It's still bearish on the weekly, right? So if we look at the weekly, you're still building an inside bar bear pattern here. We did close below that green bar low, by the way, um, 26,331.93. And we close at 26, 155 a few weeks ago. So that pattern's technically negated officially. And now you can make a case you're making bear consolidation here. But 
uh, for me, I, you know, I just don't trust it. So um, I'm not doing anything with it, but that's the level I would look at um, for a, a swing, potentially 21.5. You know, if you somehow shape up and you, and you can uh, push higher, then your big level is, you know, above this red bar, 30,086 on a weekly close. Then you can go much higher on Bitcoin. But outside of that, I'm not doing anything with it here. But um, it was all over the map this week. And again, we'll see what it does next week. All right. Anyways, flipping back over to the spiders here really quickly. Um, so again, market going up into the level we thought it would. Neutral to high uh, pre-holiday week makes sense. Tuesday, I don't expect a whole lot. It's a holiday hangover type day usually. Um, but we'll see. Um, if we pull back downside 445, that's your big level there. If that breaks, you know, it's down to 430. Um, if we do take this out, then it's the gap fill and then double top there on the spiders, pretty easy levels. Um, remember, we are coming into September. We could see some selling pressure. We've had a lot of gains. In fact, the NASDAQ had its biggest or best start to a year ever. I think it was up 45% at one point year to date. Um, so maybe seeing some gain harvesting as we get into the fall. And don't forget about those rate hike lag effects as well. Lots of stuff going on here. Higher energy prices are also, you know, a pressure on the economy and uh, a pressure on balance sheets, corporate balance sheets too. So anyways, guys, can wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next week.